Hey there, engineers. Welcome to Civil Engineering Academy once again. We're looking at a problem from geotechnical engineering, and this one's dealing with effective stress. And the problem reads like this. For the given soil profile, soil properties, and height of the water table shown, what is most nearly the effective stress of the soil at a depth of 30 feet from the top? So it looks like we've got a soil profile here that shows a sand where we've got a dry unit weight or a dry density of 120 pounds per foot cubed and a saturated unit weight of 125 pounds per foot cubed. We've got a, a water table that looks like it's just eight foot below the surface. And then it looks like we've got a layer of clay. It's about 20 feet deep. If you go from 20 to 40 and the clay that the unit weight saturated unit weight of the clay is 107 pounds per cubic foot and the problem is asking for if we were to look at uh, the point 30 foot below the surface so about right here I'll kind of draw a dashed line right here it's looking for the effective stress which is usually indicated by a sigma prime Okay, we'll put a little dot here to show that's the point that we're trying to find our effective stress. Well, how are we going to get after this? Um, well, first thing you want to do is look at your civil, uh, or excuse me, your uh, FE reference handbook. And it says that your effective stress, sigma prime, equals your total stress less or minus the pore water pressure. And it also shows that, uh, I'm going to, I almost made this a mu, but that's still a u. <laughs> uh, u equals, of course, the height of the water times the unit weight of water. And so let's, uh, let's get after this and see if we can't figure it out. So let's, um, let's first start with um, calculating what I'm going to call the total stress at 20 feet down. That's going to be right here at this point. Well, the total stress uh, we need to get at, um, we've got two unit weights here that we're working with with the sand. We've got the dry sand up above the water table and the saturated stuff down below. So uh, we need to take the unit weight of the dry sand and times it by the depth, I'll call it Z1. We'll call this point right here Z1, which is really eight foot below there, but in a general sense, we're gonna call it Z1, and then we're gonna go gamma sat for the sand times, uh, we'll call this Z2 and Z2 is going to be, so this was Z1 from here to here. And I should erase that and put Z1 is from here to here, right? And then we're going to call this one Z2 from the 8 foot point. Hopefully that's legible. Z2 is from 8 down to 20, right? So let's throw those numbers in there. So our dry unit weight, we're told, is 120 pounds per cubic foot. And we're going to times that by our Z1 depth, which was 8 feet. And then we're going to add that to our saturated unit weight since... The sand is below the water table at that point. And we're going to times it by Z2. Well, Z2 is basically 20 feet minus 8 feet. Okay. If we look at that, uh, we calculate that, we should come up with 2460, 2460 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, so that's our total stress at 20 feet below the surface. Okay, now uh, let's get after our total stress at 30 foot 
below the surface. Since we've transitioned from sand to clay, now we've got this 10 foot of clay that we got to deal with and it's got a different unit weight. So we're going to say that the effective stress down 30 feet down is going to be our effective stress from our 20 foot mark plus the gamma sat saturated of our clay times and we'll call this next distance z3 right so z3 is going to be this distance right here okay that's going to be our total stress down 30 feet down so we already know what sigma 20 is right we got 24 60 pounds per cubic foot now we're going to add um, our saturated unit weight of our clay, right? And that's all times uh, the depth of our clay, which we could say uh, distance Z3 is 30 feet minus the 20 feet above it. Okay, and then um, let's, uh, let's just bracket that one more time so it's clear our order of operations on this calculation. So we're taking the 2460 plus 170 pounds per cubic foot times the 10 feet, right? That's the difference between 30 and 20. And we should come up with a total stress of 30... 530 pounds per cubic foot down there at 30 feet for our effective stress, or excuse me, for our total stress. Now for our effective stress, we got to take, so if I, let me write it out here, we'll say sigma prime, the effective stress is the total stress minus the pour water pressure down at 30. 30 feet, right? So if we take uh, what we calculated for sigma 30 at 35, 30, and we're trying to be diligent about carrying our units, pounds per foot cubed, and then we are going to subtract. Now, since we're eight feet from the top, our, uh, our depth is going to be uh, the 30 feet minus the 8 foot that we are from the top. It's the difference between those two numbers is our total depth. And then we're going to times that by the unit weight of water, which we know is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And we will... Put a bigger bracket around there so we're clear on our order of operations with this equation. And if we calculate that out, we've got our total stress at 30 feet. We're subtracting the pore water pressure down at 30 feet. We should come up with uh, 2157.2 pounds per square foot. Okay, and I apologize, I need to make a little correction here. I was creating a uh, unit of cubic feet on all these stresses, and that just doesn't make any sense for a stress unit. It should be square feet, so I apologize for that. Stresses are in pounds per square foot. And that's the uh, that's what the effective stress is too down here. So anyway, uh, 2157.2, and that corresponds to answer D. So hopefully that helps you out, and we will see you on the next one.